It was complete indoctrination. I knew they were weird. I knew that they were off. So, wow, <laughs> right? The more that family members and victims speak out against Ruby and Jody, the worse it gets for those two. We're gonna talk about some of the things that are being said in today's video. <laughs> Sofa Squad and welcome back to the old sofa. It's right back there pretending to be a sofa. My name's Paul and our little sassy sidekick, Mr. Roscoe, is with us today. And you might notice that he's wearing a little something something on his little neck. Let me show you what somebody brought to me at Crime Con. It's so adorable, y'all. It's his little collar. You see where it says, do not cross. Isn't that adorable? I love it. He loves it. Be sure to check them out. So like I said, today we're going to be discussing some more statements that have been made. This is not breaking news by the time you watch this. Uh, it's just taken me a while to get to things, go over it, come up with some opinions and thoughts and whatnot on it. So we're going to be listening to some family members of Rudy's, of Ruby's, I'm sorry. Also, mostly paying attention to Adam Steed towards the end, talking about him. And then just the power of these victims coming forth, because this is what it takes to bring people like Jody and Ruby down. So let's go ahead and start off with the first club. I'm not shocked. Um, you know, if you've been through... The kind of things that I've been through, it's not a shock at all. Um, I guess the direction in which it went was not what I expected, but from which it came was to be expected. Now, one of the things that we see that's so common is just like in this instance where this person has asked to, you know, have their identity disguised. This is how powerful these two people are. And these two people, I mean, Jody and Ruby, uh, it's shocking the links that are gone to, especially by Jody. And we're going to talk more about that and see more of that here in a little bit. But what they will go to to destroy someone, to gaslight the situation, to try and get away with the crimes that they have committed. It's hard to say anything without getting... I suppose I wasn't expecting some of the details in that story to line up with some of the details in my, my own family history, I guess is what I'm trying to say, um, quite as well as it did while uh, my mother uh, handcuffed my, my sisters when they were young. and a lack of food um, wasn't uncommon, um, but it wasn't out of a lack necessarily of money. There, were, there was a time when it could have been prevented, but it wasn't. Uh, the lack of food, I mean, and the, the handcuffing uh, that happened to my family too with my own mother. So what seems very interesting and tragic at the same time is to hear these narratives from different victims, uh, whether they're extended family or just not even within the family, all lining up with the same stories. Now, here's the thing, like you could hear this person speaking and, you know, they're saying, you know, listening to this and like, wow, this lines up with my experience and how they weren't thinking that. And I've said this in some of my other videos about this case and other cases as well. Yeah, but when you're growing up, there's like that room of time that you don't know if what you know is what you know. And if your parents are doing something that might not be right, yes, eventually you might be able to put two and two together if this doesn't feel right or that's not right or why did the neighbors live this way and we don't, that type thing. But the world that your parents create is the world that you know. And oftentimes the world that you trust, even if it might not be the best thing for you. And so hearing many of these victims come out, you can see that realization take place. And even more so when they're putting the dot, you know, connecting the dots with other member family members other victims and saying wait a minute this is the same thing that happened here well from an outside on or outside looking in viewpoint like myself you know i'm sitting here and i'm like wow it amazes me it was almost like just this you know cut and print you know, situation that they created by they meaning uh jody and ruby for what they would do, the punishments, separating family, doing all this kind of stuff. And so much of this relates back to Jody, which we will hear more from here in a minute. Your mother handcuffed your siblings and you? Luckily, I was not, but the, other, the others were. There's been a recording released by police, and you can hear them talking. You can hear talk about 
people being duct taped, children having duct tape on them. Has that ever happened to you or your siblings? All I can say is that my mother did duct tape my siblings, um, but I haven't heard anything specific being talked about before before that. It was my siblings who told me that it happened. Um, I didn't hear the 911 dispatch call. Uh, this is the first time I've ever heard of that, but I'm not shocked. When was the last time you saw Ruby? When I was very young, and yeah, it was a long time ago. Uh, do you have a ballpark on the number of years? Over 15. More than 15 years ago. That's yes. the last time you saw Ruby? Yes. I know you want to, you know, protect your identity. There is a relation here. I mean, you're related to her. Yeah. Would you consider yes. yourself a distant relative? No. So the thing that surprises me about this, and, and when I say surprise, I mean kind of like puts a weight in my stomach, is listening to this person say, oh, it's been about 15 years, there's that level of fear still associated. And the whole thing of, okay, I wasn't duct tape, but my siblings said they were. The duct tape thing, I'm like, where, at what point would someone even consider this as an option, right? It, it blows my mind, that dynamic of it. But again, we see... People are escaping from Jody's home with duct tape on them. So you see where this is coming from. So what is the family's reaction, your family's reaction to Ruby being arrested and charged with child abuse? Much the same as mine. Um, I'm trying to form the words. I guess. Disgust. Because this is something. It is multi-generational. So my, I am very privy to the way that I was treated and the way that my siblings were treated. And so to see that further on down the line is not shocking, but disgusting. And that would be there uh, along the ballpark of, of what they feel too. Now, I wanted to put that up there because I thought it was interesting when they said this is multi-generational. So this, you know, with that word, I'm curious what y'all think down in the comment sections. To me, this says this has been going on for generations and this type thing. So obviously, Jody has not been involved you know, with generation after generation after generation. I mean, one would hope, right? So it's like, where is this coming from? Because clearly a lot of it is coming from Jody. You hear these teachings. You hear other people saying this is coming from her. This is coming from her. Well, if it's multi-generational, it's like, where else is is this coming from? Is this coming from their religion? You know, what what is going on there? Why is this happening over and over? Now, also, it could just be a, a pattern that goes on of this is how I was raised and we keep handing this down. And then you have these other influences like Jody coming in there and making it that much worse. Now, what I want to do at this point is go on to a couple of clips of Ruby's sisters. Now, remember, like this whole family, and I say whole family, like her sisters and whatnot, these are all like family vloggers and this type thing. Let's hear what they have to say looking at some new news clips of the incidents that have gone on and their opinions of it. Another one of Ruby Frankie's sister speaking out on the situation involving Ruby and Jody Hildebrand. And just like Ruby's sister, Bonnie, Ruby's other sister, Julie, also posting a video on YouTube. Remember, this is a family of vloggers with large followings on their channels. This is some of the video. Julie posted it on her Daru Crew Vlogs page has about 225,000 subscribers. She talks about not needing to defend herself, not getting too deep into the weeds about this. She does talk about a sudden split from Ruby and brings up Jody Hildebrandt. Listen. Three years ago, Ruby, everything was great. It seemed to be fine anyway. We were a typical family. She was getting some therapy counseling because their family needed it, which I think is great. However, I think you need to get it from a great source, read the reviews. Jody Hildebrandt and her website or therapy style, I don't know what you want to call it, connections, was not a great resource. And we all saw it. We all felt weird about this Jody lady. We didn't, we weren't comfortable with it. We didn't like it. We didn't like the teachings Ruby was bringing to the family functions. And we were this close to telling her, if you come to our family events anymore, we do not want to hear what you were learning through connections because we don't like it. We never did say that to her, but we thought it. Now, thank God she's saying this statement now, at least, of, 
you know, if you're going to get this kind of help, great, fine, dandy, but this play, Jody situation and not the right place to go. Okay. Now also the whole dynamic of, we were going to say this, but we never said anything. You know, I question how much the extended family members, these sisters who we're going to hear from knew what was going on behind closed doors. Yeah. You know, because if people are coming and saying these things that have you to the point of being like, uh, we're, we're not down with this. You're watching the videos, you know, it's a precarious spot to be put in because it's like, that's my sister. You know, to what extent do we know what's going? on. Much the same that people are questioning with Kevin of, okay, he didn't know about, allegedly know about the abuse, but you know, what else was going on? You know, you're in the house, you see these videos being made, you know, were you okay with the things that we saw taking place? You know, and I pose the same question here to the sisters as well. My thoughts towards Ruby and Jody and Kevin and connections is, is that it was all bull crap. It was it was complete indoctrination of this thing that they created. We did not know what they were doing because like we said, we were cut off. I knew they were weird. I knew that they were off. Those are the things that we kept quiet about because what was I gonna say? What was I going to do? I was not gonna come out and publicly say that I don't like my sister and I don't like what she's doing and I think she's weird. She had posted a video the evening of her sister's arrest, but later deleted it. I don't think any of us could have ever seen this coming. I, we all did as much as we could legally and you don't know what you don't know. The only thing that we ultimately care about is that our nieces and nephews are safe and they are. So, wow, <laughs> right? You know, we're hearing some of the same narrative that we often hear and with cult-like behavior, we were cut off, we, you know, they they kind of excluded us. Now she gets a little bit more raw and real, like this is bull crap, this isn't, you know, right, so on and so forth. So it's clear the behavior has been going on in front of not only the public, but the family too, extended family, I'll call them, uh, even though these are sisters and whatnot, but you know what I mean? That is clearly wrong. You know, these teachings and whatnot, these other sisters are claiming, hey, now again, how involved, you know, was everyone in this, meaning Kevin? You know, a time will tell, you know, courts will tell, but again, oftentimes silence and inaction is just as much as an involvement in things, you know? And so in these little statements here that are coming out from the family, of course, everyone's gonna be like, oh, we didn't know, we didn't know, we didn't know, you know? who wants to say, oh yeah, we knew that was really horrible, but we didn't want to report or turn them in. I mean, come on, right? A lot of people aren't going to say that. And I think that could be the case here, but I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't know these people. And they're speaking out now, which is great fine dandy, because again, with, I, with someone like Jody, and again, I'll be lump Ruby in there as well, but someone specifically like Jody, because this seems to be where it all goes back to, you know, this is what this takes. This takes everybody speaking out and coming out. Yes, this is what we saw. This is what happened, you know, to continue to take her down. Cause I do think that that will happen, but it's going to take everybody speaking out as loud as possible, screaming it from the rooftops. Now on that note, let's get to the grand finale. If you will, we're going to be looking at some clips and some newspaper articles on Adam Steed. Now, Adam is the victim of Jody, who she lost her license over. Very tumultuous situation that went on years ago. Now, just to preface this with, and you'll hear more about this. First of all, he's done a lot of interviews on some other like uh, Mormon channels and stuff like that, or a podcast or something. I definitely am going to go back over those. This is an interview with Jesse Weber and Jeanette Levy, Law and Crime. You can see the whole thing there if you haven't watched it. But he's going over basically the situation of how he came in into therapy with Jody and what came of it. Now we will segue into a little bit of his previous case, a lawsuit against the Boy Scouts of America for basically suffering at their hands for a certain type of abuse. Do the math on that one. So that part is triggering to you because his story, it's its powerful in that the message that he has, and it seems that it's a, lot, a theme in his life, is speaking out and speaking out and seeing something and saying something from situation to situation. And so God bless and my hat is off to this man, right? You're gonna hear his story and you're just, I mean, it's just like, how does he keep living through this? And I'm not saying that in a negative way, but I mean, my God, it just pulls at your heartstrings. So let's go ahead, let's get into the first clip and then let's talk about it. One of her former clients is a man named Adam Steed. Steed says he was abused by someone with the Boy Scouts of America when he lived in Idaho as a child. He then moved to Utah. 
He became married, and that's when he met Jody Hildebrand. Okay, so again, what I just said, that's Adam. This is what took place. That was building the foundation on what we're about to talk about. So let's go on to that next clip. So my my Mormon bishop asked me to go, me and my wife, to go to her. I had just uh, finished um, passing the statute of limitations in Idaho for criminal and civil abuse. They, they had this bizarre statute for five years. And and I had changed that with my dad and, and a lot of people that we had done a grassroots movement together. And I moved down to Utah and I had just finished a settlement case with Boy Scouts of America. Now, this is what I'm talking about. So he goes into this. And again, we're going to look a little bit into that case, the Boy Scouts of America case here in a minute. But I just want to kind of get his stuff out of the way first before we get to it. But as I'm listening to this and watching it, I'm just like, oh my God, like this is insane. This guy has jumped from one frying pan to the next. It's like he can't catch a break. But again, with what he has done in each of these, it's like he's a beacon of light, a beacon of hope, and he saved so many other people. And he continues to do this. And I just find it interesting that, you know how like sometimes you just seem like someone has a specific mission here on earth, whatever that might be, right? And so watching him tell his story, I just kept thinking, wow, this guy is, you know, by having to live through these horrible things, he's helping so many other people by bringing awareness to it. And so while I would never wish these things on someone, it's like my hat goes off to him for the way that he has handled it and how many others he's helped by doing that. And then like immediately afterwards, my bishop asked me to go to Jody Hildebrandt with my wife for therapy. Adam Steed says he and his wife were seeking counseling for ordinary issues that come up in any marriage. Now, this also seems to be a theme that we hear with the people who have gone through this and guys and stuff where depending on the, the, the scale of the issue, I mean, it's like this is normal stuff and you'll hear, I mean with what he was going through, okay, I just survived this, you know, the, the Boy Scout thing, you know, a, a family, a marriage, this, that, this is like normal stuff that it's like, yeah, you know what, let's go to some counseling. Let's make sure we're communicating correctly. Let's make sure we're working through this. Okay. Having no clue the person that was getting ready to come in and try to absolutely destroy your life. Yeah. Just normal marriage issues outside the fact there was a lot of stress on our marriage because, uh, we had done a settlement for abuse with Boy Scouts of America, you know, and we were having an, you know, my, uh, we had a, a one-year-old baby and we had a newborn coming along and, and we were both in school at Brigham Young University trying to do all of our credits. And, and this is what I'm talking about. So you're going through this major lawsuit. Okay. This isn't like a, a slip and fall of the grocery store. Okay. Like this is hardcore and we're going to talk about it in a second so you're going through that what do you say a one-year-old a newborn or you know one on the way two young children in the house on the way whatever both in college these are incredible stressors okay if you've been in a relationship a marriage whatever you know there's ups there's downs there's there's twists there's this there's that right and certain things can bring stress to the relationship that kind of take front and center i mean can you imagine and so i'm like hey i get it right like it would probably be a great idea to make sure hey let's go have some immediate some conversations make sure we're still working well as a unit and again it's like she was a little velociraptor just waiting over there to the side to strike out against not only this couple but numerous ones 2008 we we just finished the scouting settlement i think i had the psych evaluation for the damage it had done to me somewhere in like the late fall and then I think around Christmas or winter or something, we had settled this case or, or somewhere in the early, early January or February. And I think it was in April that I had started therapy with Jody Hildebrand, a, a group therapy. Now, again, the whole thing of the group therapy, you know, we had done this, we had done this, bum, 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 the timeline of it. One thing that is of interest is hearing from these various victims of Jody's, maybe not specifically in this video, but other videos that I've done, is the absolute blueprint that she had for how she victimized people. And I mean, literally it was a blueprint. Also, in addition to that, you know, victimizing people, not only emotionally, 
in other ways monetarily you'll hear adam talk about the money behind this and you're like you know how much was this i mean we're talking exorbitant amount of money so imagine you're putting this money forth number one to save your marriage to save your family you're wanting to keep your family intact you're in school you're doing this you're doing that i mean the fact that she could not only victimize these people but then rob them blind on top of it absolutely blows my mind and now on that note let's go ahead and talk about the Boy Scout case. We're going to do this by looking at a few pages from an article by Daily Beast. Let's start with the introduction. Now, because of the sensitivity of the article that we're going to read, you're going to see some stuff blurred out. You're going to hear me kind of like avoid saying some words, and this is just so that the video doesn't get, you know, hit or taken down because of these words. But we'll start off here with this on the screen. This is by Daily Beast, and this is specifically by Michael Ames, updated July 11th, 2017, uh, and then published August 24th, 2013. So this is going back some in relation to this case now it says child charges if you will those type of you know, bad things against a child at Idaho scout camp in the 90s has lasting impact and this is talking about Adam's case so let's go ahead to that first page now it says in 1997 Steve that's Adam was a 14 year old junior counselor well on his way to earning the rank of Eagle when he arrived at Camp Little Limhi a scenic campground on the Snake River south of Grand Teton National Park in southeastern Idaho his father Paul worked as a Mormon seminary teacher in nearby Pocatello and fell secure sending Adam and his younger brother Ben to the church sponsored camp. What no one in the Steed family nor the parents of any other boys at Camp Little Limai knew was that the camp's program director Brad Stowell had a trail of dozens of child you know what accusations dating back nearly a decade. Okay now let's pause there for a second and this is what you hear stuff like that and you already know this still goes on to this day right? They'll reference some other cases you know that we are familiar with. I might not have a specific specifically in this part right here, but in the full article, it's there, which is heartbreaking in and of itself. Looking back, you just want to rewind time and stop your, and put your hand in there and stop. You know what I'm saying? Like stop it from happening because it's like they're being sent to the lair. And the fact of the cover-ups and all this type of stuff, that is what absolutely gets me with these situations is that these people are allowed in these positions of power and privilege and they take advantage of the most vulnerable population. One of the most vulnerable population, I should say, in the most heinous ways and then somehow people are able to turn a blind eye and cover it up i will never be able to understand that and i hope that i am not able to understand that okay because there's no understanding it it's completely wrong let's move on to the next page after being violated by stowell that summer steed acted on what the boy scouts of america in its own literature and educational videos calls the three r's of protection recognize resist and report but when steed went public with his story to a local newspaper he claimed that after he told camp officials that Stoa was waking up the boys in the middle of the night to fondle them. He was told not to tell his parents. I mean, and again, you know, well, of course they're going to say don't tell your parents, right? I mean, this is not surprising, okay? They want to get away with it. You know, they want to cover it up. They don't want this to go out. And this is what I'm talking about. Keep in mind as we're going over this, we're hearing him speak out now against, you know, Jody. Listen to what this man has done and what he's gone up against already, only to then enter into Jody's circumference. Let's go to the last page. By the time Steve arrived in the late 90s, Stowell had been promoted several times at Camp Little Lehmai, from counselor to assistant water sports instructor and eventually to program director. The timeline of events surrounding his crimes is chilling. For two years in the early 90s, he traveled on his church mission to Alaska, where he violated a boy who has to this day not been identified. In 91, Richard Scarborough, a neighbor who knew about Stowell's checkered history, wrote a letter to the Boy Scouts of America office in Irving, Texas, to report the P word in their ranks, uh, what you would call someone like him. Uh, three years later, when Stowell had still not been removed, Scarborough wrote another letter, this time to a higher authority, Mormon Church President Ezra Taft Benson. According to the Post Register, the letter he received in return claimed that the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare had looked into the case and determined the nature of the allegations warranted no further action. It's almost like someone's tentacles reach far and long to help cover this stuff up. Now, as we've heard from him say, he reached a settlement with them, and he was able to save numerous people and get this monster taken down and bring light to the situation. Again, only to turn around and find himself in the same scenario. So let's move back to the video clips and finish listening to what he had to say. How did the counseling start? Did, did it seem to go well at first or or, or did were there red flags right away? You know, I, 
I will tell you a story that um, Jody Hildebrandt's more sophisticated than a normal person in a lot of ways. She evolved into what she became. You know, she works, the, she put us in a phase one. There's phase two and phase three of the particular group she was in at the point. And uh, phase one, it, she didn't, it wasn't very intense. It was lighthearted and fun. And, you know, think of like a PG movie or something and a lady that's just charismatic and fun and teaching these principles about delusion, denial, and all this kind of stuff, uh, codependency, using small examples in people's lives where they didn't realize they were in this state and the whole room laughing about it. Uh, that was phase one. And it was, you know, um, couples, all happy couples thinking they were this incredible lady. You know, what, when she separated the couples into all women and all men groups, then after she gained everyone's trust, then really bad things began to happen. This is the part that has me like, oh, whoa, how calculated. Phase one, all couples, happy, excited, thought that this is going to be this way, but, 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 you know, pointing this out, everything's in jest. I mean, this is like the definition of grooming them towards this outcome that she looked for. And she was clearly able to be very successful at it, right? And this is not just Mr. Adam that we've heard about this from. We've heard about this from numerous people at this point with the same type story and this is the scary part about not only people well J jody herself but people like jody is they get this down to a science they know it works for them just like the the boy scouts guy that he's went he he had a thing okay here's what we do we do it like this but 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 i get away with it done good i got it and clearly jody was doing this with numerous people what's different in in my case is that when i chose to leave this like cult like group uh there uh jody tried to punish me and she worked through byu honor code office uh and legal measures to tr to try to hurt me now again we've heard this similar situation from others as well you know when you try to leave when you call her out that's when it all goes down south and we're going to hear his personal story which is terrible what she did to him uh, now she was reprimanded for it and we'll hear about that as well but again this is very similar and before i even say this y'all know i'm not credentialed enough to give an accurate or a, what do you call them like legitimate diagnosis so when i say things like oh this is typical narcissistic behavior and whatnot this is just my experience in my own life watching this stuff as well as dealing with these personality types in the past in my own personal life and so the whole thing of oh, he's calling me out he's doing this i'm gonna go around and make sure that i ruin him first before he can speak out this is what abusers have to do they have to turn the victim into the villain in order to continue the facade and get away with what they're doing and she clearly did this with him and i ha i i have um, um the emails between my ex-wife and her planning out all this stuff talking about what the real issues in our marriage were and then them evolving that into something drastically different with allegations that would totally destroy your life and and how that evolution happened from what they originally were like is, is just astounding i had to come forward because when i heard that they were doing the same thing to those little kids that they did to me to hide their crimes it was totally predictable no that last part really hits heavy for me when he's like when i heard that they're doing those little kids what they did to me and it's like no one's immune, right? They do this to a grown adult, but they'll do the same thing to a little kid. I mean, it, it sends chills all over me. Now, also listening to him say, you know, my ex-wife and I found the emails and you know, her talking about what the real problems are and this and that. How devastating would that be to go into a situation like this and then you see your spouse get turned against you and you see that pivoting of now your spouse is also become the aggressor along with this other thing of, okay, I'm coming after you now you're the problem you're the this you're the that you know and you're just like oh my god now especially for adam who's like i just survived you know this old boy scout thing right we've been through this together but jody has been able to come in here and destroy us now i've heard many people talk about this and literally i talked to some of you at crime kind about this now y'all this is complete uh, going off on a sofa tangent over here we don't know but it's like almost like there's this vibe of where she wants to get to the wives and whether in a romantic way i don't know but there seems 
seems to be something else there along these lines of like this weird, why are you separating the men from the women? Like, what is your end goal? Are you trying to get with the women? Like, what is up here? Because obviously we've seen the level of abuse she's instilling. Would not surprise me if that was another layer of abuse that was coming down the pipeline. And I, I knew my records would just completely show the world the truth of how dangerous this lady really is. And and clients that are close to her that that are probably not really good people in the first place, but that she enhances their abilities under her uh, under her guidance to do incredibly criminal things. The next question is going to be how many people go down around Jody? We've seen Ruby, obviously. How many others will go down or they'll continue to be a cover up? You know, will we continue to see that? The fact that she's still incarcerated, it speaks volumes at least. And I hope she stays there. If these allegations end up to be true, this is a person who does not need to be any act or have any access to the general public again, right? I mean, this person has scared so many people from coming out and speaking. And again, I'll give a shout out to Adam for being here and doing this. And not just Adam, we've heard from Jesse, we've heard from multiple other people, right? That have come out and spoken out. Whereas before there was a fear of what's gonna happen. This person's powerful. They've already destroyed me in this way. People don't believe me now, but finally they were able to hang on and get their stories out there. Adam claims that Jody Hildebrandt conspired with his then wife to accuse him of sexually abusing their child. I never had the courage to talk about this openly because the damage was so bad. After Jody and my ex-wife got done trying to make me look like a child abuser and a addict and everything else, having been a victim that came forward to change the laws to protect children and having the insecurities that victims have, the stigma and all that stuff, and Jody working on me to try to make me look like I was a predator. Now that part is so powerful. And imagine, just like he said, going through this, surviving this, and then learning that they're trying to pivot, meaning Jody and his ex-wife are pivoting you to be this abuser of your own children. I mean, what a helpless, tormented feeling that must have been for him to have to be put in that position by these two. And again, how grotesque is this? How many people have they done this to? And not they, meaning his wife, but Jody specifically. You know, how many people has she done this to that didn't come forward, whose lives have been utterly destroyed. Think of all the damage that she's been able to cause over the years to families and men and children and women, and that she got away with. And hopefully now is time to atone and account for all of these crimes that she has committed. Jody coaching my ex-wife in fine. I, I'll, I'll share that in this other interview, the exact words as she coaches her through how to make people think that they're coming up with the idea themselves. Now, again, that part right there, coaching the wife, making them think they came up with the idea. This is so scary how precise she is with her form of abuse and manipulation. And this is the thing. And again, I don't know if she's a narcissist, a sociopath, what, I don't know. Okay. But it's just so reminiscent of so much of that stuff. And you look at the damage that one human being can do to so many, to so many. I would like to see if other charges are going to come up against her. You know they have to be talking to dozens of people with these type stories. You know, what can they start hitting her with? What kind of crimes can they do? And then also thinking, like, he's talking about his ex-wife. Like, what does she have to say about this? You know, what does she have to say? What do, you know, was she a victim herself who was brainwashed and then turned against her husband? Or was she just a crony? You know what I mean? Like, these are the questions that I have moving forward with all of these different stories. Like, how involved was each person who was really brainwashed and what was the end goal of Jody's the game's over and these little kids that you know that they're accusing of abuse abuse right now to hide their crimes that's just an old MO. Now, this part's scary to me because remember what he's referring to is in the custody court or whatever it was. Ruby making these major allegations that her children were doing things to, you know, one of her child's children was doing something to other ones as well as other children outside the family. This major bombshell allegation. Well, here you hear him saying this is just their MO, basically gaslighting. Gaslighting onto the victims that they've been doing this, destroying their reputation. And what better way to do it? I mean, we're talking about sick twisted people here well not just to me to probably hundreds of people 
And there's going to be so many victims coming forward with the same story. That, a story that if you told it on your own by yourself, everyone would think you're weird and creepy. But when 100 people come forward and tell the exact same story, and that's why Jody's trying to, they're trying to act sick and speed up the hearing. And again, it would make sense. They want to speed stuff up and, oh, I'm sick. We need to do this. We need to do that. Because they, they probably are smart enough to know, oh my gosh, we're going down. And there are tons of people who can come out and speak up against us. Keep doing it. Keep speaking out, please. You know, it's going to be what takes them down. If they get enough charges against this monster, she'll never see the light of day again. And he's right. So many people are going to come forward. Hundreds, he said, you know, and I'm sure there is easily. This is what she was doing for a long time with organizations backing her and the whole nine yards i mean this goes deep she uh was just contacting like she didn't want me to leave her therapy group and she had my wife send an email message to me of the terms so that the marriage wouldn't end and included that i had to go back to jody I had to pay for it was thousands of dollars a month again i said in the other video follow the money that's where all this leads back to in addition to the power the manipulation thousands of dollars a month for this and you know oh well you can't leave therapy you have to do this you can't see another therapist look at kevin you know now i'm not trying to say that he's in the clear because obviously stuff was going on on that channel there's clear evidence of the mistreatment of the children but look at his story of i'm living in an apartment you know ruby doesn't want me to have any contact with her or the kids it's all up to her the same story that Adam is expressing here is the same thing. This is what she did with these men. She would separate them and have them like fund this life. You know, and it's like, I mean, it makes no sense. Like why? I mean, it doesn't make sense to us, right? Because we're not thinking in Jody's terms. It probably made sense to her because she was trying to get something nefarious out of the situation. Documents we obtained from the state of Utah show Hildebrandt's license was suspended for a time in 2012 and that she admitted to discussing a John Doe's clinical diagnosis without his permission with clergy and two other mental health therapists. The documents also say that Hildebrandt admitted to doing this, and that she also shared information with administrators at the John Doe's university. Steed says he is the John Doe listed in these documents. Well, and again... Amen for having that happen and to get her license taken away and things looked into. The entitlement. I mean, look at this person going around, ruining this man's reputation, but there, clearly a lot of people enabled this behavior. And like you heard him say earlier, you know, oh, she has these, you know, other people who might not have been that evil and that bad, but it was there and she turned it into something even worse. There needs to be accountability on several levels for this. And I hope that there is. I hope that other charges are going to be able to be brought against Jody in this because I think as they unearth things, they are going to find lots and lots and lots of illegal criminal stuff going on in relation to this and very well could with Ruby as well. I think there's going to be a lot of co-conspirators in this. I don't think that Jody is able to operate and do the things that she was doing without people enabling her, without people in positions of power and authority helping this to move along for whatever reasons. Now, if you are still watching, well, I appreciate it and let me know what you think about all of it in the comment section. And Roscoe does ask you, he's over here sleeping, but he says, you know, if you're watching, he appreciates it to and to drop some of those little baby sofas off in the comment section for him. And until we all meet down in there to discuss the going-ons with true crime and everything else, we'll see y'all there.